Do you remember when I did a video in the aftermath of South Africa's amazing win over New Zealand at Twickenham, only a few days ago, how I commended the, the class and the humility of the New Zealand fans in defeat? I still stand by that statement for their fans. Their pundits and ex-pros, however... You know, it was an abomination as well in terms of the refereeing and the amount of time the game took from a fan's perspective. While we were all admiring a brilliant South African performance, and while the New Zealand fans, from what I could see, were respecting that as well, the pundit class in New Zealand, well, they were going on about the referee, about the TMO bunker, and about the spectacle. We don't want to be talking about this all the time. Is the bunker, the judicial, you know, the refereeing. Oh, okay. Maybe I've actually got this wrong. Mills Muliaina has just spoken sense. Sorry, I, I must have misunderstood. Please continue, John Kerwin. When we have a pedantic ref who um, doesn't let the game flow, we really struggle. We don't want to be talking about this all the time. It's the bunker, the judicial, you know, the refereeing. You know, I'm not blaming the referee, I'm blaming the rules. We don't want to be talking about this all the time. I have absolutely no doubt that the New Zealand players and coaches wouldn't have been mentioning any of this stuff once in the aftermath of that game. They would have been focusing on the things that they could control and didn't control in that game to try and fix them ahead of France. These pundits, though. But there's no way, and I go forward and we go and look at a Rugby World Cup, that this is going to be the standard. Because if it is, we're going to rely so heavily on this bunker yeah. to look at every single breakdown. Games are going to last forever. We don't want to be talking about this all the time. And the reactions got even more bizarre. Ultimately, for me, this shouldn't have even been a yellow card for going off his feet. The contact wasn't direct with the head. We don't want to be talking about this all the time. So now let me get this right. Um, Scott Barrett did nothing wrong whatsoever and New Zealand were unfairly down to 14 men, is that right? This shouldn't have even been a yellow card for going off his feet. Jeff, it's a bit embarrassing that, that I have to explain this to you. The, the yellow card, minimum yellow card, wasn't for going off his feet. It was for a definition cheap shot, dropping his shoulder onto a player that was on the floor, completely out of the game and completely unnecessarily. It wasn't with the head, it was on the body, it was on the shoulder. You watch what the first contact is. There's no doubt he's gone off his feet, but he's hit him in the shoulder first and then there's been a collision with another player beside him. I'm just imagining the response. If the roles had been reversed and it had been Eben Etzebeth dropping his shoulder into Dane Coles, what do you reckon? This shouldn't have even been a yellow card. I'll say one thing for the breakdown. It, it is entertaining. I mean, it's laughable, but entertaining. I want to show you a couple of cleanouts from the Springboks in this game. We don't want to be talking about this all the time. If you talk about moments, significant moments in the game, how close were they? And just look here, watch Dane Coles on the ball. Jeff, come on. If you can't tell the difference between this... This shouldn't have even been a yellow card. And this... Look here, watch Dane Coles on the ball. I'm not sure I can help you, mate. We don't want to be talking about this all the time. Player off the ground. If he collides here, what's another one here? On the back of Dane Coles' head, that clean out. We don't want to be talking about this all the time. And so for me, the margins you're talking about and some of the frustrations we're going to have if we see inconsistency. Inconsistency, you say? What, like the inconsistency between your reaction now when it's a New Zealand player and how outraged you were just over a week ago with Owen Farrell? That kind of inconsistency, but... At least it can't get any worse than this. What I want to know from you two is, do you think we are going to see players taking a fall or to use some football parlance, taking a dive? Because we did see with Marx there, you know, effectively appealing to get the bunker in on Scotty Barrett. Yeah, you did hear that right. Now, not only did Scott Barrett do nothing wrong, but Malcolm Marx might be a bit of a cheat for appealing for the TMO bunker. One of the hardest men on earth. If Malcolm Marx is putting his hand up after someone drops a shoulder on him, Maybe it's because it was a sly cheap shot. This shouldn't have even been a yellow card for going off his feet. We don't want to be talking about this all the time. This was an incredible game and a fantastic performance by South Africa. And there were lessons that New Zealand needed to learn. But they just wanted to go on and on and on about all of the things which New Zealand didn't have to take responsibility for and couldn't control. Kiwis, if you love your rugby, and I know as a nation you do, and you want unbiased fair and balanced content during the Rugby World Cup. I may only be one guy just chatting into a microphone, but I can promise you that much. Hit subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you on the next one. We don't want to be talking about this all the time.